the difference between working in a startup and difference of working Kroger, which is a more corporate company. Chit, 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 chit. You already know it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. Your boy's back and out and did it again one more time with your boy Omar Suriel, aka Big Papi, aka the big hitter, <laughs> aka young football star, you know what I mean? <laughs> aka nah. Young Cotorra, you know what I mean? <laughs> What's good, son? listen man we just gonna give the people an update you know last time we did an interview in my office and it was pretty cool people really enjoyed it you know so now we just gonna give the people you know a little update see how you been how's how's everything you know from the last time that we we interviewed you we basically went over how you was working at Kroger um, mm -hmm. That's the name of the company, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was working at Kroger and yeah, now. Huge, the biggest supermarket chain in America for sure. Yeah. They have different, they have like different supermarkets all over, but they, they basically own almost every supermarket that's not Walmart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so he was working there and then you switched it up to go. I remember it was in the transition of going to a, a new startup. Yeah, yeah, that was right around the time yeah. that I, yeah, I, I hadn't even worked at the start of for six months when yeah when, when I came over to when you were in Connecticut yeah when we talked there yeah so yeah tell me how how's it been now the difference between working in a startup and difference of working Kroger which is a more corporate company so you ask what's the difference like between Kroger and working at a startup so I guess I can start by saying this like which your people would probably love to hear since they're in here for to learn development and it is that with the whole coronavirus stuff going on at least it has been nice that that's one thing that hasn't you know like me as a as a programmer as a web developer whatever you want to call it like have not been affected by that financially at all things have changed a little bit like now I work from home full time like I don't go to an office at all I actually don't even know if my if they're gonna like downsize the office or something because I heard uh, even though I'm not like working haven't been working for the past few days uh, for reasons that maybe we can get into later I saw a message on, on slack that they're looking at new office space so I'm wondering if they just if they're just saying like we just want to stay working from home the whole time or whatever so yeah so working as a developer like at least that has not affected it so you know if you're in this channel because that's something you want to do in the future because that's something you want to learn th there's another reason you know while everybody's struggling or whatever because of the whole corona stuff work for developer it hasn't changed almost at all except for the fact that most people are doing it from home now but to go back to your original question difference between the big company and the small startup i think the the breadth of responsibility that an individual has working for the for the big company um, again is is the biggest supermarket chain um, in the United States probably in the world so it's a huge company and like their technology division of the company was I don't know thousands and thousands of people and just the the part of, of the technology department that worked on the website pretty much in like the online ordering and food delivery and all that stuff just that part when I was there was probably close to a thousand people just that part probably close to around 800 or something like that I would say that's a guess but that's just kind of mm -hmm. what I think and you know that was just for like the website you can say and the online ordering um, that's not even including like all the other programming that needs to be done for like um, you know the the cashiers machines the uh, the system that you see on the self-checkout, all that stuff, it's like, a, you know, that's not even including none of that. That's just for ordering food online um, that you have like 800, 800 plus people and they have been hiring like crazy. So they probably have a lot more people now because they, they want to grow real fast. So when you're working on something that there's like 800 people working together to build, it, it tends to be that you're you're part of a team and then that team is ju just works on a little part of let's say the website yeah. um, and that team could be about 11 15 people something like that and again for example to, just to give you an example when i worked there i worked for the team that built like the little website you could say like the little web application 
where products, there's groceries on the website that you can order online. So somebody has to post them so that they appear on the website. So my team built the software that people use to post them on the website so that then people could go and buy them. And just building that little thing that it, you know, it just allowed people to like put, put, put their name on it, you know, like on the products, descriptions, uh, up, upload pictures for it, you know, all that type of stuff. It, it sounds like it's not that complicated, but when you're working for a big company like that, and then everything has to be on sync with what's on stock and all that stuff, and there's so much data that sometimes you cannot just make a database request because, uh, I mean, they have like millions and millions and millions of, of different products and stuff. So some sometimes a data query could take like overnight, You know, not overnight, but it could take like two hours. And so you would, some things you could only do overnight because, you know, it's just a huge scale and everybody specializes in something. Mm -hmm. So your responsibility is a lot less. Jumping onto the startup, when I started working there, it was three full-time developers, including me. So basically before me, there was only two. You know, we have pretty good interns that you could pretty much say they're, they're just another developer. You know, it's not like how some companies hire interns that kind of know nothing because they can just afford to pay them even if they don't do much um, just do like as a favor for them for us as a startup like every single dollar we spend like matters so even our interns are like are pretty good developers but anyways when i started it was two de two full-time developers and one intern and then me now i think they have an advantage and it is my my manager like my my tech lead um that's a person that i met when i was actually working at the big company and he had always worked with startups and then was working for a big company and he was actually really good um, there and they wanted to keep him but he just wanted to go back to the startup stuff so you know because i had kind of built a relationship of me asking him about startups once he left and went to a startup um eventually when he was more established um and he left to be kind of like the cto which is like chief technology officer if you're not familiar with the term which basically means it's like the person that's in charge of all the technology uh in the whole company so that's what he went to that company to be and then basically he recruited me like, hey man, um, it's only two of us plus an intern and we really think you could help or whatever. So come join us. At first I was like, not a chance. Like I'm at a big, huge company, pays me well. They took a chance on me when I, um, you know, when I didn't have a college degree or anything like that. Barely even knew any programming. Um, and, and, you know, and they kind of have changed my life when it comes to like everything, you know, income, social circle, seeing stuff a whole other side of life whatever so at first when he told me like hey come join this startup i was like not a chance that was kind of like my first thought i didn't tell him that mm -hmm. uh, but then the more i thought about it it was like you know like this actually makes a lot of sense and and the main thing i wanted to learn was like how to build stuff with just a tiny amount of people like how does that work because i never experienced that at least professionally um so i switched there and then all of a sudden you have a ton more responsibility you have to learn a lot more different stuff because we don't have like a database team for example that's gonna like like do all the database stuff for us and then uh, a, a huge design team that's gonna design everything for us we we just have a few people and somehow we have to make everything work so when it comes to like the full stack you really have to know everything or you at least have to know a little bit of any of everything you have to know how to mess with AWS stuff, how to how to manage servers and all that stuff, um, how to how to do stuff with the database um, directly because there's not DBAs that are gonna do that for you. You have to you have to know all your database stuff. You have to know you know you have to do the front end, the back end. You have to do everything. So it's like literally literally full stack. Yeah. Now um, so so far, which one you like more? I mean, because working in a big company, you have to you know, work in, in small little areas. Now there's yeah. more responsibility on you because it's a smaller team, so I'm pretty sure you got more responsibility yeah. than what you had before in the bigger company. Yeah, well, I would say I like I like um, what I am at now better. I think it's a better fit because like I said, again, one of the main reasons I wanted to, to be a developer was to like build things. And, and I feel like I get to learn so much about not only like building stuff from scratch, like I, like I like I'm doing, um, but I also get to learn so much about business. You know, like I, I at least when we were in the office, I, I see the CEO on, on a daily basis, and sometimes we just have lunch with him and stuff, and, and just start to talk to him about business. I, I'm also like doing real estate investment investing too now, 
and, and the CEO of the company, he also has some real estate that he invests, for example. So sometimes I will go out, will go out to, um, to lunch with them and ask them some real estate questions and stuff. Doesn't always apply because he's more into commercial real estate um, instead of like residential like I am. But, but you know, like things like that, um, I, I really value that. Where at a big company, it's like, you don't know the you, you don't know anything. You don't know, you don't know anything. There's no relationship. Yeah, yeah there's no way. You, I mean, we, when we saw the CEO at the big company, I mean, I tell you, it's, it's huge, huge, huge company. I think uh, at the point that I worked there, it was classified like the 12th biggest company in the world. Um, and so, you know, when we saw the CEO, he was like at an event on the stage, like he was like doing a concert or something, you know, like, you know, like a whole conference and stuff like that's how you saw the CEO here is I can just go like go and talk to the CEO um, if I wanted to and, and the same thing with like technology you know I can ask questions like why are we building this um, you know not just like hey we have to build this and sometimes at the big company you're like this doesn't make sense like why would we build that but you just have to build it I mean what are you gonna do you're gonna call whoever made the decision way up the chain you, you most of the time you don't even know who does so um, you know, I, I like being like that close to the action. So for me, I like being at the at the startup, but you know, there are some like downsides to that. Like for example, uh, we don't have like a 401k and things like that, which especially to me, somebody that's trying to like really hard, at least try to be somewhat financially smart, like not having a 401k, you know, having a 401k is like, it's like great. It's free money, you know, when they match it, um, it's literally like, double your money you could never invest like in the stock market and hope to to make that um so you know i don't have a 401k um things like that but but at the same time you know my pay is still i would say competitive um and and and, and again I, I i love the company and seeing like what it's like doing things at a small scale so that i can gain some of the knowledge for my benefit